Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to warmly welcome you to our service today, Sunday, the 19th of December, 2021. We are drawing near to the Christmas, and we thank God for the coming of the King. This Sunday, the 19th, we want to warmly welcome all our viewers and listeners all over the world, members of ACKs and Barnabas, wherever you are, with your families. Today, the Lord has prepared his servants to minister to you. The preaching of the gospel will be done by our ray reader, uh, Mrs. Mother Rombe. Mrs. Mother Rombe is married to Arnold Rombe, and they have a son, and we thank God that uh, he has, she, he has, she has around herself to be used in the Lord's vineyard. We will be read the service by Mrs. Florence Mutungu, also our ray reader, and we thank God for her variability and for her presence with us today. We also want to welcome Reverend Ruka, my colleague, who has been on leave, and he is able to come back we serve together. So on this day, the 19th, we want to ask you that you open your hearts and your lives to receive the Lord Jesus Christ and to be blessed of him. That Christmas will not only be a time of gifts, exchange of gifts and marrying and parting, but you will remember that we have a special gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the most important thing is to dine with him, who is the bread of life, and who will give us the permanent relationship with him. So I have, after I have said a prayer, I want to welcome Mrs. Florence Mutungu to read us with the service. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for your presence is here and now. We want to thank you for gathering us here, Lord, as your children, not only members of ACK St. Barnabas Otiende, but all over the world, our listeners and our viewers. We pray for the infilling of your Holy Spirit. We want to pray for your servant mother as she brings you a word. The Lord will use her. And through the word, more souls will draw near to you. We want to pray for Florence, we want to pray for clergy, we want to pray for the staff, we want to pray for Mary, 
our facilitator, that in one spirit, spirit of agreeing together, all the sacrifices we are going to offer will be acceptable before you. And your people, your viewers, Lord, will be blessed. So visit us, Lord. May you be manifested in a special way on this Sunday the 19th. For it is in Jesus Christ we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Mrs. Florence Mutungu. You read us in this service. Praise the Lord, church, and good morning. Let us turn to page three of our prayer books. The Lord be with you. We have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, renewed in spirit, together we are one. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. So let us confess them to our Father. We may kneel or stand. Eternal Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. Enlighten our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. On page four, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive, the lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you live in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed are those who live in your house. They will always be singing your praise. Praise the Lord. The name of the Lord be praised. Let us stand to glorify God. Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory to the Son who became the Son of Man. Glory to the Spirit who inspires and renews. The Lord our God forever. Alleluia. We now welcome the praise and worship team to come and lead us into praises.
Praise the Lord. Uh, the psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 123. The psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 123. I lift up my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. For we have endured much contempt. We have endured much ridicule from the proud, much contempt from the arrogant. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be. Amen. We now welcome Gerald for the Old Testament reading. Praise the Lord. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, starting to read at verse 1 through to verse 8. That is the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, starting to read from verse 1 through to verse 8. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. Each man will be like a shelter from the weed and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a dusty land. Then the eyes of those who, will, uh, those, then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed and the ears of those who hear will listen. The mind of the rash will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear. No longer will the fool be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected. For the fool speaks folly, his mind is busy with evil, he practices ungodliness, and sp spreads error concerning the road. The hungry he leaves empty. From the dusty, he withholds water. The scoundrel's method are wicked. He makes up evil schemes to destroy the poor with rice, even when the plea of the needy is just. But the, more, but the noble man makes noble plans, and by noble deeds he stands. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 6 through to 14. New Testament reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 6 through to 14. The angel said to me, This was a trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits and the prophets, sent his angel to show his servant the things that might soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he told me, Do not seal, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile, continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the light to the tree of life 
and may go through the gates into the city. And this is the word of the Lord. The second New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, St. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through to 45. The second New Testament reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through to 45. And the Bible says, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. When she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come from me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is he who has breathed, and that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Luca, for the reading of the word. Thank you, Gerald, for the reading of the word. We now welcome our sister, Martha Rombe, to come and share the, the word of God. Praise God. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. Yes, and I think it would be in order for us to say Merry Christmas. Because the Lord, we are anticipating of the birth of Christ. Um, as you've heard, my name is Martha Rombe, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I want to thank my vicar canon for allowing me to, to have this place to share the word, and Reverend Irungu and all my colleagues. Um, as we are seated here, we read from the many different books, and we talk about the birth of Christ, and it is exciting to us to have this wonderful gift that God has given us. Well, I would term my message, he came for us all, or he, the king, came for us all. And I'll base uh, this message from the book of Revelation, chapter 22. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you that you may glorify yourself that your word will be alive, that you will use me as a vessel, that, Lord, all glory and all honor will go back to you. I pray for each one who will be listening to this message, that, Lord, your presence will consume and visit them, Lord. I pray that, Father, you will touch us as you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, as we draw near to Christmas, remembering the Lord's coming as a babe to redeem mankind. We ought to ask ourselves in this, is, we need to ask ourselves a question. Is this special boy, this special child born in our hearts daily? Because it's not only on Christmas where we celebrate him, but we are to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ every day of our lives. Now, um, I begin with a story. There was this man who loved his son, and he really had purpose to buy him a car. And he did so as a father. And he took the keys and put it in the Bible of the son. And the son waited on his birthday for the gift. And the father had bought what was necessary, the cake, the food, the what, but he really needed this car. But you see, the dad kept telling him that you see the greatest gift is where you find true gifts. The greatest gift is where you find true gifts. And he did not understand that. And he was very upset for a very long time that his dad could not buy him this car. And years went by and he, he, he had a grudge and he was not happy. But finally, one day, after the dad had gone to be with the Lord, he decided to pick his Bible that 
his father used to talk about every day. And he decided to open. And guess what? Inside that Bible was a key and a card saying that the greatest gift I can give you is God's word. That is the greatest gift. But nevertheless, you are my child. I will give you also the key. Unfortunately, it had been years and the car was just there. Maybe a wreck. Now we need to ask ourselves today, what is this gift? The gift that the Lord Jesus Christ came to us. How are we celebrating his birthday? Now during your birthday, we ex you expect to get wishes, isn't it? Guest, at least a text, at least a gift, or even somebody just making a call and saying happy birthday, it makes us feel so loved and, 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 and so comfortable that somebody really cares about me. So what gift do we have for this special birthday boy? Since it's his birthday we're celebrating, and, I, and, and I'll just echo what Canon said today, that, that Christmas is not about what, what we eat. It's not about what we will do, but it's all supposed to be centered on Christ, the birthday boy. And so, as much as we are waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we should be expectant, ready for his coming. Amen? Yes, as much as we are happy that he came, he died, which we acknowledge that he came, he died, he came in the flesh, he died, he rose again. And he went back to heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. As much as we acknowledge that, are we ready for his second coming? Now, as much as we may have so many things in our hearts, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to us this morning to search our hearts, to change our ways, to allow the Lord to saturate our lives, that we may receive his word. So we turn to Revelation 22 and verse 6, as it was read very well. It says, Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. The, the Lord always reveals his plans to his people, to those he loves. Amen. You will not be caught unawares. The Lord will always reveal. He will show you that this and this is my plan. And John 15 verse 15 says, this is the words of Jesus. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. So we are friends of the Lord. And a friend always tells his friend what he's up to. But when it is a master, you do not really know what's going on. So truly, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, that he will always alert us and let us know this is what is happening, this is what is coming. And today, he, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying the same thing. Now, John wanted to worship the messenger. We read that in verse 7 to 9. And um, you notice that the angel forbid him not to worship him, because worship only belongs to God. And he said, do not do that. And, 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 and um, so, so we see that, um, I just like to look for that. Um, I want to read something very important kindly before that. Um, verse 7, behold, I am coming quickly. That is Jesus saying, blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Then now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. I love that. Worship God. Now notice one thing. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly quickly is with swiftness we do not know the time we do not know the hour in fact it says it's like a twinkling of an eye and you know you i just need you to blink just once so let us blink did you see how fast that is 
So it shows that Jesus will come quickly. That is what he's saying. And we should be prepared. Now, what do we worship? Because the angel forbade John not to worship this angel. So what do we worship? This Christmas, whom or what do you worship? That is our question today. Think about it. Do I worship the food? Do I worship the friends? Do I worship money? Do I worship trips? Do I worship? Because worship of such things, of idols, is something that is more prioritized than the Lord. And so we see that in verse 11, he who is unjust, in fact, verse 10, it says, and he said to me, do not seal these words of prophecy of this book to the time is at for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. And you hear what the words are. In short, what you do, continue doing, because the word still means continue with it. So the Lord is calling us today to make a stand. Amen? Amen. Make a stand. A stand for his word. A stand for righteousness. A stand for purity. A stand for holiness. Even in this perverse generation where we are ac accepting wrong things. What are we accepting? We are accepting to say that getting pregnant is okay, isn't it? Anytime, anyhow. Not in the marriage setting as God wanted it to be, but anyhow. Accepting, we're accepting um, same, same sex marriages, gayism and lesbianism. We're accepting things that the Lord refused. And we are told to stand and not to accept things that are not of right. I know I may not be popular about this, but the truth is the truth. So we cannot put in sin at a percentage, always sin, saying that this is big, this is small. Sin is sin. The person who was stealing and the person who was gossiping, you're the same. The person who killed and the person who has hatred for his brother in his heart, the Lord sees the same. That is how the Lord works. Because the Lord says, somebody can say, no, I am not immoral. But you know, it says, if you look at a, a woman, it is as if you have done it, you have sinned. So that is how the Lord works. And we need to understand how God looks at us. So we cannot put a percentage on sin. So God says, whoever is unjust, let him be unjust still. Who is the, who, whoever, the one who is filthy, let him be filthy. The one who is righteous, let him continue being righteous. The one who is holy, let him continue to be holy. And that is what the Lord is calling us for us this time, this season. He needs us to walk the right way and to follow him. And I pray that none of us will be condemned because of the sins we may have or the sins that we may have done. At the end of the day, God is a God of love. Yes, he's a righteous God. Yes, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is good to note. But also he's a God of love and a God of mercy and a God of grace. All you need to do is run to him. And so we need to make a choice. In this time, this season, we need to make a stand are we for the Lord over all? The Lord, when we say the Lord over all, it means that He is Lord over Christmas. He is Lord of our lives. He is Lord over every other thing on earth and in heaven. It is a choice. Verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly. Again, these are Jesus' words. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to to his work. I believe by the end of this message, you will at least think about that. Think about your works. You know, in the book of Revelation, still, it talks about, and the book of life was opened, and the books were opened. So we are seeing two separate books, book of life and the books. Now I keep saying, Lord, these are the books. That is what now shakes me. The day you will open my books, I do not know what will be written there. But we are told to keep on working for the Lord. Keep on running to his mercies. 
Every day, every day. We are sinners. We sin every day, every minute. Let us call on the name of the Lord. Let us remember the great sacrifice that he made. And let us turn to him and follow him. This birthday, this Christmas, his day. Let us follow him. Um, we had this conversation with a few young people and they're saying, you know, Christmas was, was not, 20, uh, was, Jesus was not born on 25th. That is true. But the point is, we are celebrating his birth. That is the most important thing. And that is why we call on his name and we have to give him priority on that day. So as much as we will be having Mbuzi and we will be having uh, Nyamachoma and all these things and the parties, let us remember it's all about him. So the Lord is alerting us that he is coming quickly with a reward for our works. What works have we done for the Lord this year? Let us ask ourselves, what works? Are they pleasing in the eyes of the Lord? Can we be able to stand in his presence and hear himself, hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. I believe when it's time to go home and we get to the gates of heaven, that is what he will tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. But we begin here. We do not begin there. And the Lord has called all of us to follow him and to show his ways. Now, um, verse 14. Blessed are those who do, who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Blessed are those who do. Not say, who do. Put it in capital letters. Who do. Not saying his commandments blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and enter through the gates into the city but outside are dogs and sorcerers sexually immoral murderers idolaters and whoever loves to practice a lie now we need to know where we are in are we in or out that's the point. Are we in the city or out of the city? I pray that this is food for thought for all of us, that we may search our hearts and find where, are, where, do we, where am I right now? Because it's a good thing. And I believe that if you feel that you are condemned, know that is also Satan condemning you because God is a God, a father who, who teaches his children. Just like the way I chastise my son, is the same way God will chastise you so that you become a better person. It does not mean that his love for you is any less. No, but his love is great. Now, the best gift you can give to the coming king is your heart. Amen. We may, we may, we may, we may sing happy birthday. It's wonderful, by the way. I do that. I sing for Jesus happy birthday on 25th. But the best thing we can give Jesus is our heart. The best thing we can give Jesus is our devotion, our all. You know, we are told that everything you do, you do as unto the Lord. When you're wiping a table, you don't wipe it because you are told to wipe. Or you know that if I wipe, I am paid. No, you do it as you're wiping for the king of kings. And believe me, you, the one who sees in secret will bless you openly. That is how the Lord works. So the king has warned us that he is coming quickly. My question is, are we all ready? Are we ready? Are we ready for his coming? You know, most people, we've had this, this story of Jesus coming from long before, and they keep saying, no, I don't think so, all these things. But you know, the signs are all over. Everywhere in the world, the signs are there. Rumors of wars, isn't it? Floods, parents killing their children, children killing their parents. I mean, it's just, the world is just upside down. The bloodsheds that are happening, know that it says it is just labor pains. But know that the Lord is near. So this morning, it's my prayer. In fact, it's for all of us that we give our hearts to the birthday boy. Let's give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the best gift he would ever want. In any case, 
Can you imagine the great sacrifice he came because of you? He left heaven to come as a human being, to go through all these things, all these punishments just for you. And this morning, the Lord is calling you to give your life to Jesus, to give your heart to the Lord. It is my prayer that this Christmas, we will celebrate not only the birth of Jesus Christ, but we will celebrate many joining the body of Christ. We will celebrate and the heavens will be rejoicing that one who was lost has been found. That one sheep that ran away has come back home and there'll be joy and happiness. So it is my prayer today that the Lord will speak to every heart, that the Lord will fill us with happiness and joy even during his birthday. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, indeed, we are grateful for your word and we acknowledge, Father, that many times we have failed you in one way or the other. We just ask that you may fill us with your spirit, Lord. We ask you to change our hearts, to change our lives, that we may glorify you, Father. Thank you for coming to this earth, Lord. And even as we anticipate you coming again, may you keep us ready, Lord. May you help us in our weaknesses. May you remove every condemnation from the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you help us to walk the walk you have called us to walk, Lord. Holy Spirit, may you take this word and may you use it for your glory. May it grow and germinate for the glory and honor of your name. We cover each this word with the blood of Jesus Christ and everyone with the blood of Jesus Christ. That Father, you will speak to your people and Lord, that you will bless your people. Indeed, all glory and honor goes back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Thank you so much, Martha, for the sharing of the word. And indeed, the best gift we can give to Christ is our hearts. On page 12 of our prayer books, we stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us sit or kneel. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It being the fourth Sunday of Advent, our collect for today, Lord Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we glorify you for your wonderful purpose of salvation. For you came not to condemn the world, but that the world through you might be saved. And as Mary treasured all the messages of the divine errands, so do our hearts burn within us as we await the imminence of your return as a king and judge. Help us to be ready. Amen. Let us turn to page 14 of our prayer books. Show item number 21. Show us your mercy, O Lord, Grant us your salvation. Lord, guide our president and give him your wisdom and justice. May your ministers serve you faithfully and your royal people joyfully. In the valley of the shadow of death, protect us with your rod and staff. Like trees planted by the waterside, grant us the fruit of your spirit. Send us out as the salt of the world, of the earth. May the earth be filled with glory as the waters cover the sea. On page 17, let us join 
together into the prayer of Saint, prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, by your grace, we have come together at this time to bring our united prayers to you. And you have promised by your son, Jesus Christ, that where two or three are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before your throne this morning. We want to thank you because you're a God of love, a God of mercy, and we're grateful that this far you have brought us. Father, we are thankful that we are coming to the end of the year, and you've been so good to us, Lord, despite everything. You have been faithful. Indeed, we can count our blessings and name them one by one. I pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit may be upon us, Lord, that you may bless us and remember us, Father. We remember, Lord, your people who are feeling unwell, be it in their bodies, be it in their hearts. We speak your healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come against every sickness, disease, and infirmity in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask that, Lord, you may rebuke the devourer in our lives, Lord, be it in our health, be it in our finances, be it in anything, Lord. May you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, even for those who are in hospital, Lord. We pray for them, that, Lord, you will send out your healing hand. We pray for those who we know and those who do not know who are ailing right now. We ask that, Lord, you may visit them and send out your hand. We pray, Father, for our country, Kenya. Lord, indeed, it is this far you have brought us, Lord, and we know it is your hand. Father, forgive us where we have wronged against you. Forgive us beginning from our president to the least of us. Where we have done wrong, Father, forgive us. We pray that you may bless our president, that you may guide him, give him counsel and wisdom, Lord. Even as he continues to to rule here, Lord, you allowed him to. May you help him, Father. We pray for all the leaders of this country that, Lord, you will touch their hearts, you will touch their lives. Even as a nation, as a nation we are turning towards elections and there's so many politics left, right and center, we pray that, Lord, you may choose for us the man that you want us to have. We ask for a president from you, Lord. We pray that you may help us, Lord, even this in the coming of next year where there'll be, so much, um, there'll, there'll be so much politics going around, we pray that your name, Lord, will supersede all, Father. We pray for peace in our country. We pray that you may cover our borders with the blood of Jesus Christ, that you may cover our air, the roads, the waters with the blood of Jesus Christ. We refuse bloodshed, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, especially even during this season, festive season, Lord, where everyone is traveling and everything is happening. Lord, we cover our people with the blood of Jesus Christ and we refuse every kind of death in the name of Jesus. We pray that you may move, Lord, in our country. We pray for our armed forces who are manning our borders, that, Lord, you will remember them and that you will protect our people, Lord. We also pray for this pandemic of covid Lord, you have been faithful to us. You have kept us, Lord. Though we may have been hit hard on different ways, lost loved ones, lost jobs, all these things, Lord, we still indeed give thanks. We pray that you may stop the moving of this COVID in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you may visit each one, Lord. We pray for our church, beginning with the whole ch Anglican church, we pray that, Lord, you will visit our leaders, that you will bless them, that you will guide them and grant them wisdom in all things. We pray for our bishop, our archbishop, and every other one, who, every other pastor who is serving under them, Lord. I pray that, Father, you will touch them, Lord, and anoint them for your calling as you had called them. We pray for our church of St. Barnabas, Lord. We ask that you may 
visit this church, Lord. You will bless the leadership of this church. That, Lord, you will order your steps in this church, Lord, that your name may be glorified. I pray that you may visit St. Barnabas, that you may touch us, Lord, that you may heal us, restore us, fill us, Lord, one more time, that you may uplift us up, Father, that you may be our source of encouragement, our source of peace, our source of joy, that, Lord, you will be with us, Lord, in every way. Pray for our vicar and our curate, that, Lord, you will help them in all things, that you will hold their hands, that you will show them your ways, Lord. I pray that you may visit them in a special and specific way, Lord. At times we forget that even the leaders, Lord, need prayers. And we pray that, Father, you will visit them and their families. We want to thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We pray for the prisoners who are in prison because once we were prisoners, we pray that, Lord, you will visit them. Even as you set us free by the blood of Jesus, may you set them free wherever they are. We pray for those who are mourning and hurting in one way or the other. Lord, visit them and give them your peace. And if there's anything, Holy Spirit, I have not prayed for, may you continually intercede for us. We give you glory and we give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord once again. It is now time to give. There are various ways or means of giving. You can give through our two pay bill numbers. The first one, 403-6261. Account number, you write your name. And the second pay bill is with equity. That is 247, 247. Then it will ask for the account number you will write 326546. Or you can use our PDQ machine, which is, in, which is here and it's well sanitized. And also you can do direct bank deposits in our accounts. You can write a check. You can do direct deposits in our accounts. The account numbers are reflecting on your screens. And you can also write a check to SEK St. Barnabas Church or Tiende. Or you can also give through cash, although we are trying to minimize giving by cash because of the COVID-19. As Florence has indicated, it's time to give. We continue to remind you that we are in Christmas and we remember that Christ is the best gift, but we are also appealing to you that you can bless the church with a gift we remind you that we are still ragging behind with bills, and therefore your gift during this Christmas will be highly appreciated. When a child is born in our African context and in any other context, we visit the child with a gift. Now that Christ is born, you can visit the Church of Christ with a gift to support his work and uh, the, uh, the preaching of the gospel of our own Jesus Christ. So as uh, our lady does, has said, it is now time to give. Give your tithe, give your thanksgiving, and also give your offering, as you have decided and the Lord has also spoken to you. ask Reverend Ruka to pray for the offerings before we do the final blessings. All good things come from you, O God. And of your own have we given you. Lord, receive our gifts this morning as a sign of surrender in recognition that you have given us freely and therefore we give to you. Receive our tithe and thus giving and even offerings as we welcome Jesus who is our savior. We pray Jehovah Father that you bless what you have given. For those who have extended their heart, Jehovah Father, that you may replenish and remember them. Lord, we pray that you receive these gifts and bless us 
as we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus, that you be born in our hearts. Sanctify and bless it all. The hearts that are going to use, may it be used for the extension of your kingdom, that through this gift, Jehovah Father, many will come to know you and accept you to be their savior. We worship and give you thanks and pray Jehovah Father, that Jehovah Lord you go before us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we do the final blessings, we just want to give you itinerary of what will happen during Christmas and New Year. On 24th, the eve of Christmas, we shall have a midnight service from 10 all the way to midnight. It will be just a normal service. On Christmas, we shall have the Sunday school online service at 8.30. We shall have the online service at 9. And we shall have the physical Holy Communion service at 10. On 26th, which is a Sunday, we shall have all the services. 7 o'clock, which, which is a Holy Communion. Then 8.30, the youth service. 10.30, the main service. And 12.30, the Kiswahili. Now, in the, on 31st of December, we shall have the midnight service from 10 to 12. It will be a service without Holy Communion. But on first, we shall have Holy Communion service from 10 to 11.30. That day, we will not have the online service, and we will not have the Sunday school online service, but we will have the physical Holy Communion service to welcome the new year from 10 to, to, to 11.30. And we also have midnight service, which will not be a Holy Communion from 10 to midnight. Then on 2nd of January 2022, we shall have all the services. 7 o'clock, which is a Holy Communion. 8.30, which is the youth. 10.30, which is the main. And 12.30, which is the Kiswahili. We continue praying that the favor of the Lord will be with us. And we want to wish those who are traveling, we know many are traveling, to celebrate and marry with family members. We want to wish you God's favor. And we ask you to pray for us, and particularly the ministers of the gospel, because that is the time we minister to you. So from the church, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. We pray that you take care of yourself, we have been told that uh, uh, the numbers are rising. It's worrying. We do not want another lockdown. So let us take care of each other and take care of ourselves. But above all, let us welcome the Lord Jesus in our lives and in all our endeavors. Amen. So I'll ask you to stand. And you can open your arms for the blessings. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to want you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you during this Christmas as you travel, as you celebrate with your families be with you the coming week, be with you in all your activities, and even as you labor, be with us all now and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We continue to pray for the Wayasas as they buried their father yesterday. Merry Christmas and uh, have a blessed new year.